The question for us today is how do we make this ancient experience our own experience? How do we incorporate something of this event, this meaning into right now? Because as, as I've told you regarding so many teachings, if it stays on the shelf, if you live your life over here and it's over there, it is useless. There is no resurrection. You can come to church all dressed up and have a nice meal. Or you can understand something. Even the smallest glimmer, they can change everything. The great teachers of Christianity have always said you cannot understand the resurrection without going through the cross first. Those of you who were with us Friday night in our service of shadows at the foot of the cross, when everything was stripped and black, you understood something then, didn't you? Not with the mind, but with the heart, with the gut, that desperate darkness that had come over the world. Not just the death of a good man, but the closing of a door for humanity, the falling apart of all the possibilities that could give us lives of peace and contentment and purpose. Darkness. If you don't know the darkness, how can you appreciate the light? Just like how can you not appreciate hell? I'm sure a few of you here understand that. Finally, it's over. What relief! Now frequently when we come to this Easter time, I go over with you facts that can prove to the rational mind, which is the only mind we think we can think with, the realism of the story. I can tell the little rational mind that if they really wanted to sell this story, they wouldn't have had women as the first witnesses. Because women were not allowed in court to witness. It was a primitive, unfortunately, even for the chosen people, a primitive and sad relationship to women as lower beings who couldn't possibly be trusted. Or I could tell you about the Roman guards. Remember that? Don't take for granted that they were asleep. Roman guards didn't fall asleep. And I can lay my life on it that he would not have fallen asleep guard who would do that. So those two fellows were the best of the best, standing in front of a sealed tomb, a thousand pound stone. A thousand pound stone probably means that none of us here all together could push it, but it was moved. I could tell you about the phenomenon of these 12, 11 disciples, former fishermen, completely broken, distressed, hopeless, suddenly becoming epic, heroic beings who changed the world. Spiritually enlightened people. That happened. But I'm not interested in talking to your rational mind. I want to talk to another part of your being that knows and understands beyond the rational mind. The heart is a knowing of its own that the intellect cannot match. I'm going to talk to the heart. Just, there won't be any theology, but there'll be a knowing. Imagine if it had all ended. Centuries of prophecy on the cross. All of the great music and great art of Eastern and Western civilization would not have happened. There was a fire of joy, of transcendent awareness of what life really was and really meant that came out of this event and my interest is to put some of that into your life because to believe in the resurrection is not to recite a creed to try to stuff it into your head and hope it sticks even if you don't get it and let me say this you're not supposed to understand before the resurrection the only thing you can do is this my Lord and my God. That's how you understand. To know the resurrection means that you begin to live here and now a life 
that is resurrected. It breaks through our old ways, our hopeless ways. It reveals with that eternal light in time that there is no dead end. That we need not die in despair. That however injustice, however much horror comes from the world to us, however mistreated like he was, however betrayed, however intense the forces of darkness are. And this truth is not a belief in a supernatural. It's a way of life. As my dear friend Charles Ashenen said, for those who saw the video, the resurrected life is the birth of God consciousness in the soul. Let me put that in simpler language. You start looking at things differently. You realize that everything is a miracle. That God's power is present everywhere. That all events that come at us are not random and chaotic, though they may look that way. But somewhere within, at their core, is God. All the mystics will tell you that. And when you see that, because of this knowing of the victory of the resurrection, everything changes. You make different choices. You respond to things differently. You're no longer feeling like you're left on your own to figure it out. Because that resurrection is truth that darkness cannot overcome the light. That you must never give up. And when we look at world history and all the unbearable horrors of it, don't come up with a silly atheist argument. How could God let that happen? God doesn't let that happen. We let that happen. It's human beings who behave that way. And the ones who don't, the ones I knew in France who were helping the Jews escape from the Nazis at the risk of their lives, who were all Christians, that was the manifestation of people who believe in the power of light even in the midst of the darkest times. And we're going to go through dark times. We know the global economy and all the yellow journalism about the future. And I say to you, if you remember the resurrection, you can live in peace. You can proclaim that no matter what, God belongs to the back. The victory, however unemployed, all has been broken through. This human being has created a bridge between the mortal being and eternity. It is real. Not then, but now, for you. So to believe it is not to just have some idea you have to hold on to. Even if it doesn't make sense, it's to begin to live differently. If Christ is resurrected, that means evil does not win. That means light needs you to keep helping it enter the world. That means we have a job to do. That means when we're ready to give up, we haven't thought it through yet. We have forgotten the glory of the resurrection. This is not just about Jesus. We don't worship Jesus, the risen one. We recognize the presence of God at the heart of all things that cannot be kept down. And so the mystics will tell us when are you going to take that thousand pound stone off of your heart? When are you going to allow the mystery of God to carry you forth? Trusting that the Holy One is unconditional goodness always, no matter what the circumstances seem to be. And that death itself is but a passage, a threshold into even greater light. The resurrection makes us people who live a resurrected life, a new beginning. You don't have to be who you've always been. You can live in that joy. And that was the striking, single most powerful thing of the early Christian. Joy. Joy. Because they knew that the transcendent, the holy, the eternal was present with them. As Christ, the risen one, is present with you now. Or we know it not. And that is why ancient Christianity and our Greek friends in the chapel at the end of these beautiful services 
Say Christos Aneste. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Like you really mean it. Christ is risen. Eternal God made known to the risen Lord. Present with us always, seeking us always. On this Easter, this timeless moment, we ask that you roll that stone out of our hearts that we may be filled with light. To know that we are children of light, children of the resurrection. To know that good conquers evil always because you are our God. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.